Howdy, little palerinos. Welcome to Kids Church, your favorite place to be. I'm Polly, the prehistoric pelican, and... I'm Teacher Sarah, thrilled to share in the joy of learning about Jesus with all of you. Did you hear, Polly? Jesus performed miracles to show his love for us. That's jaw-dropping. Let's dive into worship and celebrate the miraculous love and friendship of Jesus. Yahoo! Yahoo! You're the way, the truth, the life. Jesus, show me how to choose what's right. When my feelings just aren't on my side, I know that you help me every time. You are the goodness, the light. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about a guy who had the perfect chance to give a mean guy some serious payback. Some serious payback. Some serious Was that an echo? Serious payback. Some serious payback. Some serious payback. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sanjay. This month, we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. Whoa. What you got there? My uncle just visited this incredible cave. It's crazy. Just look. Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. It's the longest cave system in the world with more than 400 miles of passage. That's farther than driving all the way from Mammoth Cave to Atlanta, Georgia. And then I clicked on this link here. This is Sundown Cave in Vietnam. It's the largest cave in the world. It's so big that trees grow inside parts of it. Hmm. Cave trees. Plus, the Waitomo glowworm caves in New Zealand. So those lights are? Glowworms. Thousands of bright blue glowworms. Pretty impressive. But you should know that I, too, know a little something about caves. Really? Care to test it? Let's play it! Welcome to You Don't Know a Cave from a Hole in the Ground. Long name for a game show. Kind of aggressive, too. Right? First question is to Skylar. What do you call the activity of exploring a cave? Easy. Spelunking. That is correct. Next question, Sanjay. Are these formations stalactites 
or stalagmites? Well, a stalagmite has a G in it, which reminds us that it grows up from the ground. But a stalactite has a C in it, as in ceiling. That's where they hang from, so stalactite? That is also correct! Now, it's time for the lighting round. Don't you mean lightning round? Oh, I get a lighting round. Okay, here we go. Skylar, this flying mammal can often be found sleeping in caves. Bats. Correct. Yes. Sanjay, what type of rock is often found in caves and can be shaped by water over time? Granite. Oh, that's wrong. It's limestone. Back to Skylar. This category of cave-dwelling animal has no eyesight or skin coloring. Spiders? Oh, it's wrong. The answer is troglobites. Okay, Sanjay, the three deepest caves are in Georgia the country, or is it Georgia the state? Georgia the country. That's correct. And now for the tiebreaker. A piece of feldspar has been acted upon by hydrothermal alteration and low-pressure metamorphism. What is the pH level of the resulting kaolinite, and why? That's impossible to answer. Totally! First of all, we would need to know the hydrolysis reaction of the potassium leaching from feldspar's silicate framework, not to mention the status of the aluminum octahedral sheets interleaved with silicon tetrahedral sheets toward forming that billosilicate clay. Well done! Good game. And now it's time for... The Story Before the Story! Today, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, where we read about a man named Saul, who was the first king of Israel. But Saul didn't follow God. So, God told the prophet Samuel to anoint David as the next king. When David killed the giant Goliath, Saul welcomed David to the palace to serve him. But as David gained success and popularity, Saul became jealous and tried to kill him. David escaped into the wilderness with a band of outcasts. David lived on the run from Saul for nearly 10 years. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Even though David had done nothing wrong, Saul refused to give up pursuing him. When Saul heard that David was in the desert of En Gedi, Saul took 3,000 of his best soldiers and led them on the chase. When this guy has a bad idea, he really commits to it, right? When Saul and his men arrived at a place called the Rocky Cliffs of the Wild Goats, Saul needed, let's call it a rest stop. So he went into a cave for a little privacy. But newsflash, this happened to be the very same cave in which David and his friends were hiding. From the darkness of the cave, David could see Saul, but Saul couldn't see him. Golden opportunity, bro. He's right there. Huh? But he's still king. Hey, didn't God say, I will hand your enemy over to you? Then you can deal with him as you want to. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Do you want to be hiding in caves the rest of your life? Huh? David had every reason in the world to hate Saul. First, David already knew he was supposed to be the next king. And second, David had served Saul well. He had never done anything to hurt Saul. And yet Saul was determined to kill him. So what would you do? if you had the chance to get even with someone who was mean to you. Here's what happened. Ever so slowly, David crawled toward Saul. He was careful not to make a sound. David inched his way forward until he was 20 feet away, 10 feet away. Saul had no idea his enemy was right behind him. David chose not to hurt Saul. Instead, he simply cut off a piece of Saul's robe as proof that he could have hurt Saul. 
But when Saul left the cave, David felt sorry for even that one small act against Saul. He followed Saul out of the cave and called out. King Saul, my master, why do you listen when men say, David is trying to harm you? Saul turned around. He must have been completely shocked. <laughs> Look at this piece of your robe. I cut off the corner, but I didn't kill you. Who do you think you're chasing? I'm no one important. May the Lord be our judge. May he decide between us and stand up for me. Saul realized everything David had said was true. <laughs> you are a better person than I am. You have treated me well even though I've treated you badly. I know for sure that you will be king, so please promise not to hurt my family. David agreed. Saul returned home while David and his men went to a safe hiding place. Even though Saul was still his enemy, David had peace, knowing he had chosen to stop and trust God, instead of taking payback into his own hands. The end. Wow. Yeah, that could have gone a lot differently. It would have. If David hadn't stopped to think first when Saul showed up. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Well, you're probably not going to run into your worst enemy in a cave anytime soon. But, just like David, you can show self-control when you stop to think first and ask God to help you do what's best. Self-control is about choosing to do what's best even when you don't want to. Like, if someone's being mean to you at school, Instead of being mean back, stop, take a deep breath, and you can silently ask God to help you in that moment. Maybe you tell them to stop, and then maybe you walk away. And if it's something that has happened before, you can find a trusted grown-up and talk to them about it. Good point. We run into these situations every day where it's important to stop and think first before acting. Like when I think about something funny to say when my teacher's talking. You? No. Definitely stop and think about those consequences. It could be your little brother spills milk all over your homework. Or someone cuts in line. Or you go to grab something at the back of the pantry and you end up dropping 20 things in the process and you just want to lose it and you want to start throwing things and yeah! Domino effect. Yes, exactly. All good times to take a deep breath and think before you act. God can give you the power to show self-control when you ask. And you can look at Jesus too. He had all of the power in the world, even though he could have just done it, just like that. <laughs> You've got it. See y'all next time. Bye. <laughs> so here's the thing. Think before you act. I think I want to check out some more awesome caves. But first, some cave snacks. Rock candy. I love this stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Time to gear up. Let's go. Crystal Caves in Bermuda. Oh, I really like that. That's kind of cool. Do you think there will be bats? That lesson on peace really warmed my feathers, Teacher Sarah. Peace from Jesus is like a gentle breeze that lifts us up, Polly. It's so important. Absolutely. With Jesus' peace and friendship, we can brighten even the gloomiest of days. Amen to that. Hey, Polly, do you remember what this month's big word is? You bet I do. Here it is. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 2 Peter 1, dot dot 3a. Once again, God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 2 Peter 1, dot dot 3a. Thank you, Polly. Now let's see what adventures await with Mr. Phil and Reginald. Hey, hey Mr. Phil. Phil. Happy birthday, Green Gorilla. Happy birthday to you. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, Green Gorilla. Hey, good morning, boys and girls. It's Mr. Phil here. Thank you so much for joining us on our birthday celebration for Green Gorilla. It's his birthday today. And yes, Green Gorilla is such a great friend to everybody. He's such a great blessing to us all. And you know what? He represents 
what God is all about because he's a great friend to us. When we're having a bad day or if we're having a great day, he's always there to support us and make us feel better, which is a lot like God. And so, yes, he's a great example. And so, yeah, we're all here to get, wait, Big Bear, did you finish your cupcake already? We barely just finished singing happy birthday and Big Bear ate his cupcake already. Okay. <laughs> Big Bear. Yes, Big Bear. We might have another one for you. Don't worry. Okay. But yeah, we're all here. Oh, what's that, Reginald? Why didn't, why isn't there a candle for Green Gorilla to blow out? Okay. Well, first of all, Green Gorilla insisted on not having a candle because he wants to be good to the environment and not make smoke. And second of all, last time we had a candle in a birthday celebration, Reginald, you used a flamethrower and we had to call the fire department. Okay. And there was smoke everywhere. It was terrible. So no more candles or, uh, or matches for you. Okay. So anyway, but Hey, it, it looks like you guys all have gifts for Green Gorilla as well and presents. That's so cool. So Batman, what did you get for Green Gorilla? Well, I was going to get him a joke book, a bat joke book, a bat joke book. What's a, what's a bat joke book? It's bat jokes. Why did the bat cross the road? Why did the bat cross the road? Uh, I don't know. Why? Because there were bad guys on the other side and he went to beat them up. Okay, I, I think you made that joke up just now, Batman. I don't think that's a real joke. In fact, that sounds a lot like a chicken joke, you know, like why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why? <laughs> why what? Why did the chicken cross the road? Okay, well, there's a lot of different reasons why the chicken crossed the road, Batman. I mean, um, to get to the other side? That's not very funny. Okay, okay. Batman, can we just see what gift you got for Green Gorilla today, okay? Well, oh, wow, look. It's in an Apple bag, so it came from an Apple store. Wow. I'll bet it's some kind of cool technology that Batman made. Or maybe Alfred made it. I don't know. Well, let's see where it is. Wow, it's in bubble wrap, too. It's in bubble wrap. Okay, well, let's see what it is. It's a banana. Oh, okay. How ironic. It was a banana that came in an... Apple bag. Okay. Well, that's good. But hey, Green Gorilla loves bananas, so he's very grateful and happy for it. Good job, Green Gorilla, and good job, Batman. So hey, what did you what about you, Big Bear? Oh, you guys all went together and got Hey, is that a picture of Reginald when he was a baby? Okay, okay, okay. I'm just kidding, Reginald. So wow, you all chipped in and got him something big. Okay. Well, let's see what it is. Let's see what Oh, it's a whole bunch of bananas. Wow, look, you got lots of bananas, Green Gorilla. Isn't that great? Okay. And what about you, Reginald? Did you get Green Gorilla a gift? You did? But you want to show it after our song this morning? Okay, great. Well, hey, let's do our song this morning. I'll get my trusty guitar, and then we can see what Reginald gave Green Gorilla for his birthday, okay? I'm getting my guitar. Let's get the camera all set up nice and straight here for everyone. And now let's do our song. Our song is called All That I Am. And you know, God is always there for us. He gives everything for us. And he's always there like a great friend, the same way that Green Gorilla is a great friend. And so the least we can do is give everything that we have up to Jesus as well, whether we're having a good day or even a bad day. We can lay it before Jesus' feet and he's there to support us, just like the great friend that he is. So here we go. It's called All That I Am. All that I am, all that I have, I lay them down before you, O oh Lord. All my regrets, all my acclaim, the joy and the pain, I'm making them yours. Lord, I Offer my life to you, everything I've been through. Use it for your glory, Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. in the past things yet unseen 
wishes and dreams that are yet to come true. All of my hopes, all of my plans, my heart and my hands are lifted to you. Lord, I offer my life to you, everything I am through. Use it for your glory, Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. Lord, I offer you my life. Amen. That's right. We are to lay our lives before the Lord, everything that we have. So, all right, speaking of giving everything that we have, Reginald, what did you get Green Gorilla for his birthday? Oh, it's in this box down here. Oh, wow, it's a big box. What is this thing? Wow, it's pretty heavy too. Let's see what you got for Green Gorilla. Oh my goodness, you got him a Mr. Phil shirt. That's so awesome. And look, Green Gorilla's even on it. That's so sweet, Reginald. Good job. I'm not sure if it's going to fit him, though, but we'll try it on after this. Well, anyway, have a great rest of your day, boys and girls. A great rest of your week. And we'll see you next week, okay? All right. Okay. Yes, Reginald. Let's try to put this on Green Gorilla now. Here we go. <laughs> Another fantastic episode of Mr. Phil. I wish we could have adventures like them, Teacher Sarah. Oh, Polly, we have our own adventures right here in Kids Church. <laughs> You're right. Can you lead us in prayer, Teacher Sarah? Absolutely. Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you that Jesus is such a good friend. Help us to help others make peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Say, Teacher Sarah, did you know that pelicans can eat up to three pounds of fish a day? I did not know that. Can you eat three pounds of fish a day? No, but I can eat seven pounds of bread in a day, no problemo. <laughs> well, I did know that. You are truly one of a kind, Polly. Bye, Bye kids. kids.